throwing. And so uh, stand by. We're going to get started in less than 30 seconds. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, Tight Nation. Welcome into TNT Post Game. I am your host, Blue Enforcer, aka The Truth. And of course, we're going to talk about this Tennessee Titans 17 to 10 victory over the Denver Broncos. We're definitely going to talk about it in detail. Again, definitely make sure you share this show out. Uh, that is exactly what I am about to do. Uh, I'm going to be sharing this out to everybody right now uh, so that everybody know where they can go and, uh, and watch this show and so everybody can come on in. So I know a few people are in here and everything. I see um, Ms. Menz is here. Uh, Pig Wickle is here. Mark Sumter. Uh, we got AZ Mick. We got uh, Browser and also Clowny Super Bowl, of course, is here. So I know everybody's coming on in, and uh, I'm just glad that everybody's here uh, to witness uh, this show. So we're going to definitely go ahead and get everything started. So this game, I thought was it was the ugly drag out game that we all expected it to be. Uh, again, uh, make sure I share the show out on all the pages. Uh, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, um, you know, um, Twitter, or Instagram. Make sure y'all do share that show out uh, to everybody. And then that way, um, it, more people will come on in and uh, be able to join uh, to join the show and definitely talk about uh, everything that is happening. So, this game, I thought went exactly the way it was probably going to go. It was ugly. It was ugly. It was very tight. It was very tight how this game ended up going down. Let's see, AZ Big, what's up? <laughs> Clowney says, go ahead and apologize to Monty Rice again. I mean, he's probably got to play a little bit more for David Long depending on what's happening with David Long uh, and his injury. And Philip Maddox, of course, I should do that every – I should do this every show. Titan Nation. Acknowledge me. I think I'm going to start doing that every show. So, Philip, you just gave me a great idea. And it's probably going to be one that people are going to get sick of if, at some point. So, this game, I thought it was, like I said, it was a drag out fight. And, you know, defense did exactly what they what they were supposed to do. They did exactly what they always set out to do, and that is dominate at the line of scrimmage. And they did exactly that to a total of, to a total of, I believe it was six sacks, 18 quarterback hits in the game. Six sacks, 18 hits on Russell Wilson. 18. So they hit him a lot. And, I mean, you had guys from everywhere stepping up, whether it was, you know, Mario Edwards, who has slowly become a very good player uh, for this team. Uh, DeMarcus Walker has done well. Uh, 
we already know about the Nico Autry and Tierra Tart, but we're talking about the unseen guys. Also, you know, Rashad Weaver is coming back to form. He missed the last game. And so these guys are really just stepping up and just making plays all over the field. And it is something that's going to help uh, this defense, of course, with Big Jeff and Bud Dupree out. Also, you go to Dylan Cole, who helped make plays and things like that. Terrence Mitchell. Can't believe I'm saying, like, I'm giving props to him. And it was, I mean, very, very impressive uh, what was happening with um, – I mean, extremely impressive. And I thought it was very telling uh, how – this game was going. And I mean, they just made plays. They gave up one big explosive play that I wasn't happy about. But other than that, you know, I just thought the defense was absolutely incredible, as usual. Um, you know, went to the tune of, I mean, you know, Russell Wilson throws for two, you know, throws for 286, but he had to earn every bit of it. He gets sacked six times, held to a quarterback rating of 70. No running game uh, for them, because I believe we held them to 65 yards as a team. Uh, we were only outgained by seven by six yards. Um, but we held them to about 4.3 yards per play, which was very good. And we held them to four of 17. I'm not sure where that was coming from. I think I see what's happening. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. I apologize for that technical difficulty. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, not sure exactly what happened there. Um, for some reason, I was saying my USB wasn't working right. Yeah, basically, basically, that's probably what was happening. You know, John Robinson and some others are trying to sabotage me because I talked bad about him last week. So that was probably what was going on. So, you know, that was definitely an issue right there. And so uh, I appreciate everybody dealing with that. I apologize again uh, for that technical difficulty, but we got that fixed and we're going to keep going uh, on this show. And that is that this defense, my goodness, I mean, I, what, what more can we say about this defense? And that is, this defense could be special. And, I mean, they did it. They keep this next man up mentality and just keeps going no matter who's in or who's out. They just keep going. And 
it is absolutely fantastic how they're able to do that despite, you know, again, Jeffrey Simmons being out, Bud Dupree being out, Armani Hooker being out. You had, at some point during the game, Lonnie Johnson goes down. Um, David Long went down, came back in, went down again. Elijah Bolden, who fought for eight weeks to get back on the field, re-injures the groin, goes back out again, and and that's you know, and and again, the defense doesn't lose its doesn't lose its edge. The next man up mentality truly works, and they just. They keep going like nothing's wrong. They get after Russell Wilson. They, I, I think it started off rocky early, but then they settled down. And the rest of the game, after that 10 point lead, rest of the game, they were in firm control as a defense. The defensive line set the tone for everything. And then, you know, everybody else rose to the occasion. So this defense, my goodness, is. Just so good. Is so good. And I could not be more proud of this defense and how they play. And obviously, we're definitely going to get to some Stan Wilson. Stanley Wilson says Dylan Cole. Yep. Dylan Cole. I think Dylan Cole has quietly had a very solid season. Um didn't really know the Monty Rice too much, but hey, Monty Rice has played well when he's in the game. So, yep, I apologize for my Tyree, my Tyree, when I went off. And I did. I went off. So, Clowney says, uh, bad luck for Bolden. And it really is. It, it's just extremely bad luck for Elijah Bolden. And also, I mean, you know, Caleb Farley, too. I don't know what happened to Caleb Farley. It was a rumor that he went down on a special team snap because he only plays special teams now. And, you know, Cloud is asking uh, future of Caleb Farley in the Titans uniform. I don't know. That's very much up in the air. They won't play him on defense. They won't play him at all. I don't know why they won't give him a chance. But, I mean, Terrence Mitchell, you know, did well to suffice, you know, not putting him in there. And I guess a lot of people think he's a liability. And in most instances, he has been. He has definitely been a, a liability. Uh, AZ Mix says Caleb uh, is a bust. I don't know if I'm ready to call him that yet. I think if he ever gets another opportunity, he does deserve one to at least see. I mean, you got to see what you got in this kid. I mean, how do you know until you see what you got, at least for a string of games? I mean, it's really the same thing with Malik. There are some, like my aforementioned friend Jared Stillman, who are just ready to just throw Malik away and says he sucks. I'm like, he only played two games in his professional career. He's only played two games in his professional career. So just to say he sucks right off the bat, I think it's really putting the cart before the horse. And I think we really need to see a little bit more uh, when it comes to Malik. I think we need to see a little bit more from Caleb Farley as well. But he does leave a lot to be desired. Now that I will absolutely agree with. So there's still a lot that is left with Caleb Farley. But again, this defense, fantastic. They were awesome. And I just, I liked everything that the Tennessee Titans defensively had did. Uh, you know, so, I mean, that really does lead 
into my good, my bad, and the God awful. And before we do get into that, there was something else. We broke an NFL record yesterday. 17 punts happened in this game between these two teams. 17 punts. That is an NFL record now. The previous record, I believe, was back in 1998, I believe between the Dolphins and the Raiders, where it was 16 punts in a game. We broke that record. Ryan Stonehouse punted eight times. And I believe Corliss Waitman uh, from the Denver Broncos punted nine times in this football game. That's a lot. And that tells you, and there were 13, each team had 13 drives in this game. So there were 26 drives total in this game. 26 drives, 17 three and outs. Seventeen. And so Stan will say they should move Farley from free safety. They should move him to safety. That might not be a bad idea. That might not be a bad idea to move him to safety. That might actually be a good idea. So, 17 punts, an NFL record. But again, that leads to my good, my bad, and the God awful. And let's start with the good. As I mentioned, this defense is still pretty darn nasty. And I enjoy every bit of watching this defense play. It is fun. It's going to be interesting to see how they play Thursday night off of a short week. It's going to be very interesting to see how that goes uh, for them. But, I mean, I think this defense can hang with any offense in the league. They did it with the Chiefs, and it shows me they can hang with any. The Buffalo game, I think, was a, a, a... uh, anomaly. It was an anomaly. It was something that we normally wouldn't have seen out of this defense. So the defense is amazing. Uh, Shane Bowen continues to improve, and it will not surprise me if he gets a head coaching interview. Not saying he'll get a job, but I think he'll at least be looked at for a head coaching job or two because he's very, very good at what he does defensively. I can't believe I'm saying this. But some good has to go to NWI. I can't believe I'm saying that. NWI. And as AZ Mix said, That shut your pie hole must have worked on NWI. Can you do it again? I might have to because (laughs) Phil Max said, Mike Vrabel must have heard you talking bad about the tight performance. We all get the, cut your mic. We all get the PK treatment today. (laughs) And I mean, maybe he did. Maybe he did hear. Maybe NWI heard what I said, and it translated to him actually playing like he knew what the heck he was doing. Five catches, 119 yards, two TDs. I think he did hear what I said because I said last, I said on Wednesday that that was dumb, delusional, and outright stupid what he said. Talk about they never made no that they were making plays. They did not make plays, but he made plays now. So I will say that he made plays in this game. That much is true. He definitely made plays in this game. So I will give NWI some credit. 
Terrence Mitchell, another guy that was kind of in my proverbial doghouse, he made some plays. Um, was one of the leading tacklers, and he had that interception to end the game. And I think he had a shot at another uh, interception that he dropped. But, I mean, Terrence Mitchell got to definitely give it to him. I, I have to admit I'm eating a little crow when it comes to Terrence Mitchell, at least today. Same with NWI, at least today. And then last was Dylan Cole. Again, stepping up. Next man up, Zach Cunningham is out. David Long is in and out. Dylan Cole has has actually had a pretty solid season. He had a big-time special teams tackle uh, on a punt return, knocked the piss out of that punt returner. Very, very impressive indeed uh, by this. And, you know, so I'm just, I'm proud of this defense and everything that was going on. Titan South says, Hopefully we get a pick six against Rodgers. Remember, we were talking trash about Mitchell. Now he's making plays. And Mem said NWI did a great job. I mean, in this game, he did. Uh, Chandra comes and says, punter were good. I mean, Ryan Stonehouse is awesome. And Alex Mann says he needs to be drug tested. <laughs> Yeah, maybe because I don't know what he's got in that leg, but he's got something in that leg without a doubt. So I, I am very impressed with Ryan Stonehouse. But let's go to the bad now. First off, got to talk about this offensive line. The offensive line, I think as a whole, struggled. Uh, yesterday against this Denver uh, defense. And I was kind of surprised because I thought they would put a little bit better of a showing knowing that Bradley Chubb is gone to Miami and, you know, Chubb's gone to Miami. Baron Browning did not play in this game either. And you know, Justin Simmons, their all-pro safety, is also out of this game as well. So I thought there will be a little bit better of a showing uh, from, you know, this offensive line. But I can't lie. Derrick Henry only had 19 carries, 53 yards in the game. And there were also times of pass blocking Dennis Daly or Dennis Dudley looked bad. And Nicholas Petit Ferrer, he struggled in this game. Nicholas Petit Ferrer did not have a good game at all. And really, the offensive line as a whole did not have a good game. I think Nicholas Petit Ferrer gave up that sack uh, that the, uh, the Broncos had. Uh, him and Dennis Daly both got beat. So, was not very impressed with the O-line blocking. Um, the drops by the wide receivers, particularly Robert Woods. Bobby Trees dropped a couple of key um, passes, especially one on third down that could have kept the drive going. And so, I wasn't very happy about that. Uh, I know Burks dropped. Uh, a pass or two as well. And then Jeff Swain in the first drive of the game. Third and three. Tannehill swings it out to him. If he just catches that ball, it is an easy first down to keep the drive going in the on the first drive of the game, and he just drops it. Now, what I did like was that was his only target of the game, and they did not target him again the rest of the game. So I'm very happy about that. 
Very happy that he did not get another target in this game. But dropping that was bad. And then injuries. The injuries continue to plague this football team, as we mentioned, especially on defense. You were already without Big Jeff, Bud Dupree, Harold Landry's out for the year. Then uh, Ola Adaini hasn't been around either. David Long comes in and out, and he goes out. Lonnie Johnson goes down. Elijah Bolden goes down. You're without Amani Hooker. You're without Christian Fulton. And, and then Caleb Farley goes down on special teams as well. So that's 10 defensive players that were either already out or went out during the game. And I think I didn't mention Zach Cunningham. Also, so there might have been 11 that all went out in this game. So <laughs> strength and conditioning might need to be put into question because I, it is it is crazy how many injured players we have. We would had 70 players suit up for this football team, and last year we had 91. So many guys are going down. And that's just something that has been playing this football team, but we go next man up. And that's what we have to do. Next man up. And that has seemed to work well so far. But then there's the God awful. And as Mario Houston alert, uh, you know, mentions, it is Todd drowning, drowning, downing. I mean, I'm going to give him a small, a very, very small ounce of credit for the flea flicker call. Good call play, well executed. Other than that, the offense looked putrid up until the two-minute warning. That two-minute drill, great, uh, great drive. Other than that, Todd Downing stinks and has got to go. And I don't know what it's going to take for Mike Vrabel to pull the plug. I mean, again, he is being exactly like Mike Malarkey was with Terry Robisky. And I don't know if Vrabel even knows there's a problem. Because, of course, he's going to deflect it and say, uh, well, we won. We won. I'm like, you can't deflect the obvious issue. And, again, this Denver defense is number two against the pass and number two scoring defense, as I mentioned. But it seems... That Todd Drowning is holding us back. And there were two decisions in particular that was just an atrocity. One, you had a second and three. You get a holding call against Aaron Brewer, backs them up, and then Derrick Henry gets 10 yards back, sets up a third and three, and you run Dontrell Hilliard on a shotgun zone read to Dontrell Hilliard when you could have just gave it to Henry. Or you could have had both of them lined up together. 
Now, if it was a swing pass to Hilliard, okay, I could see that. Or you just give it to Henry. Sin City tighten up. What's going on? But Todd Downing is holding this team back. He is the reason why this offense is horrible and why they are 32nd in the league. And again, I'm going to look up the stats to confirm that. But again, we are still the worst offense in the league. We are still the worst. We are 32nd offensively. And we are 31st in passing the football. And that was even with Ryan Tannehill doing what he did. And then... You know, Derrick Henry, we're still ninth in running the football. And we're somewhere in the 20s in scoring. That's bad. When you're the 32nd ranked offense in the league, 32nd. That's bad. That is really, really bad. Real bad. And it doesn't seem like Vrabel knows how to pull the plug. Since City Titan says, we, I thought we could go a week without mentioning Downing, nor much he, not much he could have done with terrible O-line play, receivers dropping the ball, Half mobile Tannehill against a good defense. I mean, they're not a great defense, but they're decent. And long and Donzel says, as long as we keep winning, Todd Downing will not be fired. I mean, that that is going to be the excuse. That is going to be the excuse. Vrabel is stubborn, just like Mike Malarkey. Extremely stu stubborn. Since City basically defending Downing, saying, what would you rather do? Fire the OC or win? I'll take both. I'll take both. Winning is good, but still. It's, it's basically a microcosm. In losing, when you lose a game, you're always trying to find the silver lining or a positive out of the game. When you win, yeah, you have a lot of positives, but it's like, yeah, you know, this thing went great, but there's always something that you find wrong that you could be better at. And Derek Roberts, thank you for the super chat. Now, here's a good question. And Titan South said, well, Tim Kelly might have called the flea flicker. Here's the thing. And this is a good and this is a good question. And uh Tremaine, I've been in for about 35 minutes. You know, taking Derrick Henry out at certain times is bad. The stupid third down call by bringing Malik cold into the game in the fourth quarter. You're holding on to a four-point lead on a third down. And you bring in Malik, and he fumbles the ball. That was stupid, too. Very stupid. Now, it does make me ask the question that even though Todd Downing is going to take the majority of the fall, should Tim Kelly get some blame, too? He is the passing game coordinator, and they suppose it, supposedly – are like this. He comes up with the passing game concept. And seeing that we can't throw the ball very well, 
Should Tim Kelly get a little bit of blame too? I heard this on A to Z Sports this morning. I thought, hmm, that's not a bad question. That is not a bad question at all. I wouldn't solely put it on Tim Kelly because Todd Downey ultimately has final say. However, it is worth mentioning that Tim Kelly is the passing game coordinator and we are 31st in passing the ball. And AZ Big said when Malik fumbled, that was going to be the turn of the mo- turning of the momentum. And it could have been. That could have been an unmitigated disaster if it went the other way. What if Denver goes down, scores, and either makes it 14-13 or, God forbid, they score a touchdown and it's 17-14, Denver is ahead. And Brandon said, who the hell is Tim Kelly? Brandon, dude, come on. I, I, I think you know who Tim Kelly is. Tim Kelly is the passing game coordinator who came from the Houston Texans. His brother is the undertaker, Dennis Kelly. Now, I do agree with this sentiment. Downing was trash last year as well. Very true. And Downing has pretty much been trash wherever he's been. The Raiders had a really good offense. And he took them down. He's doing the same thing with us. So that was awful. Sam O. Sam Okwanu had a horrible game. Had a very bad game. He couldn't recover a fumble that he clearly jumps on top of and just couldn't hold on to it. He had a one drive. He had two Awful penalties. One, I want to say was, I think it was like a second and 20, and he lined up in the neutral zone. Cost him five yards. Then on that very same drive, when it looked like they were going to get off the field, roughing the passer. Even though it looked like he barely touched them on that back-to-back bad penalties, that kept that drive alive. So Sam McQuanu was the one defensive player that I just thought was bad. And Laurel Murchison, too. Laurel Murchison, I don't even know why he was on the field. Wasted. And again, it's not two people calling plays. He's the passing game coordinator, Tim Kelly. Ultimately, Todd Downing makes the final call, which, again, is stupid in and of itself. Very stupid in and of itself. So that was my good, my bad, and my god-awful. And even though that happened, we still got it done. We still took care of business. We still got the win. And we are six and three. And we have the Green Bay Packers in less than three days. Now that's gonna be tough because I am gonna go back and watch um probably tonight or tomorrow. I am gonna go back and watch um the Green Bay Dallas game. I watched some of it yesterday, but um, I'm definitely going to watch more of it and really see how we could definitely take care of the Green Bay Packers. We're going to be at a disadvantage because they were at home. We have to travel to Lambeau. Philomatic says, yes, thank you for the super chat also. Kelly needs blame. I want him and Downing gone next year. I don't want anybody associated with Vrabel's past. That includes Josh McDaniels if fired. But the question is, who will we bring in? Because you know Vrabel 
loves bringing in texting guys or maybe guys from Ohio State that he trusts or knows. You know, he doesn't like bringing in guys he do, he's not familiar with. Now, Todd Downing is one he, you know, really didn't have no history with. So I don't know why he's holding on to him. No idea whatsoever. <laughs> Titan Fox says, he says, TNT, you're always mad after we win. Last season must have been brutal for you. And, and here's the thing. I'm actually not mad. I'm not mad at all. I'm glad we won. I'm always glad we won. But there are always ways to get better. There are always ways to get better. And there are also, there are still things you can find wrong that could be better. Just like in a loss, there are good things you can find as well. So I'm not always mad. No. Landon says, Arthur Smith, I hope he gets fired. Honestly, I don't think they're going to fire him in Atlanta because I think they see some things that could be good for them. And I think Arthur Smith ultimately is a very good offensive play caller. So I think there are some good things that Atlanta is doing, although Marcus Mariota struggled in that game against Carolina. So, and I understand, everybody wants Arthur Smith back. But he'll probably end up getting a head coaching job somewhere else. And D09, that's probably why I might be mad sometimes. Because I don't like the fact that there are people that are saying, well, you know, if Vrabel seems to have this mentality of, hey, we just got to win the division. Win the division. We want more than that. We want a Super Bowl. And Mem said we need Dean Pease back. No, we don't. I am just fine with Shane Bowen and Jim Schwartz. Dean Pease, that defense down in Atlanta, not exactly lighting the world on fire. Not exactly doing well. Defensively, Atlanta is 31st. Don't want him back. Shane Bowen is doing just fine. So, again, not mad. I'm glad we won. Glad at least for one time I get to eat my words on NWI, which I am happy to say I think I might have motivated him. And I hope I will probably continue to motivate this wide receiver core. So a lot of work still needs to be done, but I'm happy we won. Keith Hill tighten up. Absolutely. Dean Pease cannot be all OC. We're down seven starters still dominated. I agree on that. So, here's what we also know in the rest of the AFC South. The Jacksonville Jaguars fall to the Chiefs and didn't look particularly hot. Trevor Lawrence looks pedestrian. He looks like just a regular NFL quarterback, nothing special. The Texans lose to the Giants. No surprise there. And then the Colts somehow find a way to beat the LA, the Las Vegas Raiders in Jeff Saturday's first game as an NFL head coach. I don't think that matters any because, hey, we've already swept the Colts. So I'm not really worried about that. So I think the NFC, the AFC South is locked up. I think we have bigger things we need to worry about. We are six and three. We are third in the AFC behind the Miami Dolphins who have creeped up 
and the Kansas City Chiefs. With Buffalo losing yesterday, with Buffalo losing yesterday to the Minnesota Vikings, which I thought was an awesome game, right now the Chiefs have the number one seed. Now the Dolphins are half game behind, and we are one game behind the Chiefs. So technically, we could still catch the number one seed again. Problem is, if we had won, if we had beat the Chiefs on Sunday night, which we were on our way to doing, we would right now be the number one seed in the AFC again. But we can still catch Kansas City. We have to catch and pass them by. But the reason why I bring this up is because <laughs> if the playoffs started right now, Miami would play the New England Patriots and in Miami. And guess who would be coming to Nissan Stadium? The Buffalo Bills. Because right now, they have fallen to the sixth spot. We will be playing the Buffalo Bills right now. If the playoffs started today, whoo, I wouldn't be feeling too good about that matchup. Whatever it takes to win, this team is a close, is a close knit group and fight for each other. That I do agree. <laughs> Why can't we have both a great offense and defense? I would agree. I'm not worried about the Colts right now because they're they're only four, five, and one. I'm not worried about the Colts. I'm not worried about anybody in the AFC South at the immediate moment. Stonehouse reaching all-time status in his rookie year. He might make the Pro Bowl as a rookie. And the defense is doing the heavy lifting because, hey, offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. So, a lot of people saying we don't want that number one seed. We run the division. Hopefully, we'll have a shot at the number one seed at the end. Dio Nas says, I don't want the number one seed. <laughs> and we, it might be better if we don't. It might be better. I, I'm sure I'd rather us be huge underdogs. I agree. So I'd rather be huge underdogs on the road. And, and, and Keith, I agree with that. I think it would be a different game. This time, if Buffalo plays the Titans again, I think I agree it will be a different game. It will be a much, much different ball game. I definitely agree. And so uh, before we do get out of here tonight, um, definitely saw uh, some news. I'll get something confirmed by Wednesday. Uh it does seem like Caleb Farley uh, likely has a, and this is from Teron Davenport, likely has a herniated disc. So that just makes matters worse for um, Caleb Farley and for the bad trading, the bad drafting early on by J. Rob. Very unfortunate. And here, and before we get out of here, I'm going to leave y'all with the victory speech from Mike Vrabel. I'm going to try to uh, play it from the beginning. Try to see if I can pull it up. Know how to win. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't care what happens. 
Okay, I don't care who gets the touchdowns. I don't care who makes the sacks. And I know you guys don't either. Okay, because you guys will fight toe to toe with everybody in this league. But you know how to win. Okay, and you know how not to quit. You know how to win, and you know how not to quit. But everybody's got to just can do, continue to do a few more things a little bit better. Starting with me. Okay, getting the details. Short week. We know what it is. Okay, get your ass a cold one and get in bed by ten o'clock. Okay, because we're going on the road on a short week. Okay, and we're putting a lot in. Okay, celebrate this, man. Okay, guys made mistakes, and you came back. The same guys made some plays to help us win. Okay, that's everybody. That's the attitude. Hey, man, that's what a family do right there. We battle to the end, man. Stick together. We got a short week. Let's go Titans on three. One, two, three. Titans. Titans. So that was the victory speech. And I mean, I know some people say, I don't want to hear it <laughs> or anything. Now, I will say, I do like the focus. Like, hey, it's a short week. They know it's a short week. They know they got work to do. They know they got a battle at Lambeau. So they got to get ready. And so, you know, um, you know, they got to get ready and they got work to do. So, you know, battle to the end. As um, as Kev, as uh, KB said, they got to battle to the end. And I think they will. So this is going to be a very interesting game. It's a very winnable game, uh, definitely, because, you know, early, uh, before the season started, I was like, this is probably a guaranteed loss. But now, I think the Tennessee Titans actually have a chance. They're going to be the underdog. They're, I believe they're two and a half point dogs already. Um, so, you know, Matt LaFleur is familiar, and the Titans are going to have to figure it out, especially on offense. And we're probably going to be playing without some guys defensively again. And so, Right now, the Packers are three-point favorite. And hopefully, you know, with a little bit of rest, Big Jeff, you know, maybe comes back, plays in this game. I don't think Elijah, I don't think Elijah Molden is probably going to play. There's probably going to be some guys that are still going to be out. Um, but I'm hoping that um I am definitely hoping that we do get uh, a couple of guys uh, back for this game. I'm hoping maybe Big Jeff does play, and hopefully Ryan Tannehill plays. I think if Tannehill plays, we have a good shot. And I think if Big Jeff plays, we have an even better shot. So I'm looking forward to this game. Uh, I am definitely looking forward uh, to seeing this happen. We will have a live stream on Thursday night, most likely I may not be at El Toro Loco uh, because I do have to go to work early Friday morning. So I may be right here in the Man Cave studio, but we will definitely recap. Uh, we will definitely talk about this game. Uh, get ready for it on Wednesday. Landon says, we know, Vrabel knows down is the issue. He's just not going to say it out loud. Probably right. So we're definitely going to see. <laughs> yeah, he said, get your tail in bed by 10. We'll definitely see about that. So we're definitely going to talk about that on Wednesday, um, about this game. Make sure you get your nominees in for the two-tone blue star of the game and also dunce of the day. And I'm with Keith. We beat Green Bay. Some stuff could get real in the AFC. I definitely agree. But everybody, I think I'm about to get ready to call it a day uh, on that. Uh, the Truth League report, I'm definitely going to try to pull that off. I know I've been kind of inconsistent with that. I'm definitely going to try to get that taken care of as well. And so I will see y'all on Wednesday for uh, TNT tonight as we get ready for the Green Bay Packers and also um, the live stream on Thursday night as we do get ready to battle the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau. It's going to be cold. Thank God it won't be any snow, but it's just going to be cold. So I think we're going to take care of that. 
and we're going to get ready to take care of some business. So, everybody, thank y'all for tuning into the show. And, um, and I agree. If you don't know who Big Jeffrey Simmons is, at some point, you will find out. So, everybody, thank y'all for tuning into this show. Thank y'all for sharing this show. Thank y'all for sticking with me as the Tennessee Titans, as Mike Keith would say, get it done again. And Titan Anderson, I appreciate you coming in. Uh, again, y'all stay tuned for the Truth League Report. Um, make sure y'all pass that out to your NFL friends. And also Wednesday night, uh, definitely uh, stay tuned to that. I appreciate that, Keith. Uh, make sure y'all subscribe to the show uh, if you haven't already. You know, hit that like button. Uh, hit that subscribe button as well. And uh, definitely hit all. So that way you um will know when we do go live. And at the end of the day, y'all, all we can do is tighten up. Because that's all we know how to do. Good night, y'all. See y'all Wednesday. <laughs>